Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I feel like our dialogue is getting somewhere. I was very moved by the comments of Ms. Mace and the comments that uh, followed hers. But I think the burden of their statements was simply that politicians try to get the media to do their will all the time. And I cheerfully concede to that proposition. In fact, we proved that in the last hearing when we showed that Donald Trump on numerous occasions tried to get Twitter to take down people's material that he considered offensive. A famous actress called him um, a P-A-B. I won't spell it out uh, in the interest of modesty. But uh, he didn't like that. And then the White House repeatedly called Twitter to say, take it down. He tried to get Disney uh, to take down uh, the comments and to uh, admonish and castigate certain late night comedians who we didn't like. So if the point is, as my friend from South Carolina was saying, well, this goes way beyond Twitter and Facebook, certainly it does. This problem goes way beyond it. And that's why the majority needs to think long and hard about going down this road. Because determined efforts by politicians and state actors to influence the entire media system, which is what we're talking about now, sweep far more broadly than just Twitter and Facebook. And if we're going to confront this problem of people using their public offices and state power to try to intimidate, then let's do it in a comprehensive way. Let's take an example, Mr. Chairman, that you'll recognize immediately. Over the weekend, you appeared on Newsmax, and you boasted that you had told AT&T, a private company, that they needed to restore Newsmax to carrying DirecTV or face the consequences. To quote you verbatim, quote, I'm very upset that DirecTV doesn't have Newsmax on there. I've been in constant communication with the leadership of AT&T and DirecTV. I've strongly encouraged them to meet with your CEO, Mr. Ruddy, to get this worked out or else, or else. Now, I have no opinion about whether or not AT&T should carry Newsmax. Apparently, it was purely a, bus a business decision, according to the Wall Street Journal, and I'll ask unanimous consent to introduce this editorial by the Wall Street Journal called The Right's Wrong Attack on DirecTV over Newsmax. A commercial dispute isn't about censoring conservatives. Without objection. So we can submit that. There was also a letter written by 42 of our colleagues, uh, including the chairman, um, to directly to AT&T demanding that they carry Newsmax. Now, um, and the premise of it was there was some kind of left-wing conspiracy or so on, and the Wall Street Journal completely debunked that, saying political coercion of business is as distasteful from the right as it is from the left. But if threatening official coercive pressure like this, follow our orders or else, applied against it, um, not just private social media entities, which is what they're proposing in this bill, but against any media entity, it would transform um, politics in America in the meaning of the First Amendment. But if we're going to do it, let's do it. And the First Amendment says if this is going to apply to the Internet, if it's going to protect Twitter, arguably, which is the conceit or pretense of this uh, bill, it should also protect AT&T against getting coerced into making a deal it doesn't want to make and spending millions of dollars it doesn't want to spend uh, with Newsmax. So um, it is hard to see why, if you actually believe this bill is improving the First Amendment, we shouldn't block all government officials, not just executive branch, but us too, legislative branch, not just with respect to the internet, but with respect to all media, from trying to force private media entities, whether it's Twitter or it's AT&T, to include a particular speaker or indeed to exclude a particular speaker. Mr. Chairman, that logic is partially echoed in your bill, which sets the policy of the Congress that employees acting in their official capacity should not promote the censorship of any lawful speech or presumably the compelled speech of private actors. But your amendment in the nature of a substitute rolls back the scope of the original bill so that the actual prohibition would only apply to online social platforms. I'd like to take it back so it applies to all forms of media content, and AT&T will get the same protection that Twitter would get putatively under this legislation. That's my amendment, and I submit it to the committee for its con consideration. Yield back. Gentlemen, yields back. Uh